How you doing, folks? Welcome back to the GM's Alcove. I'm GM Fritz. Today, we're going to get back into our series on D&D for new players or D&D for noobs. This episode, we're going to look at what you need in terms of the hardcover books and other little materials you might want to get to get into playing D&D. Player's Handbook, DMG, that kind of thing. Well, that said, there is a starter set, which Wizards of the Coast puts out. It's not expensive. It's got all the rules and maps and the, and the starting adventure, everything you need to actually learn how to play. And if you're new to Dungeons & Dragons or role-playing games, it's worth a look. But where do, you, where do you go after that? What do you need to get after that? Or if you're a serious player and you know you want to get into this, what books and other materials do you need? So let's jump into the video and show you guys what you need to get your hands on if you want to get into D&D. Now, there's essentially three core books you want to take a look at when you're getting into Dungeons & Dragons. And that's the Dungeon Master Guide, the Monster Manual, and the Player's Handbook. Now, if you intend to just be a player, you probably just want to grab the Player's Handbook. And that's what I advise anyone that's just getting started in the system. The Player's Handbook is the essential guide to role-playing in the Dungeons & Dragons universe. Uh, and it is the beginning, the starting point, even if you plan to be in a dungeon master. Get your hands on the player's handbook. It's about 300 pages and has all the rules for character creation, combat, spell casting. Uh, it has all the different races and classes you can choose, backgrounds you can take for your character, as well as all the combat rules and spell casting rules, the lists of spells. They're all contained in this book equipment as well. Uh, everything from the cost of a meal to an ale to how much it costs to stay the night in an inn. It's all contained in this book. This is the starting point for your journey into Dungeons and Dragons. And it's the first book you want to get your hands on if you're going to be a dungeon master. So there you go. That's the player's handbook and the first thing you want to get your hands on. Dice are pretty important to the game of Dungeons & Dragons, as you will see, and you're going to need quite a few of them, and your collection may grow uh, quite sizable as time goes by. But essentially, there's six different types of dice. Uh, there are four-sided dice, six-sided dice, eight-sided dice, ten-sided dice, twelve-sided dice, and finally, a twenty-sided dice, which we'll use quite a bit in the game system. And here they are laid out before you. And you can have multiples of each one when you're just getting started. But essentially, you want at least one of each different type of die. They will be used to resolve everything from whether you hit in combat, how much damage you do, whether you make a savings throw to keep yourself from falling from a cliff, or the effects of spells or skill use. Uh, they're very useful, so grab yourself some polyhedral dice. There's a few other things, some of which are optional. You'll need to play Dungeons & Dragons as a player. Uh, but essential, as well as dice in a handbook, is the player character sheets. Now, you can use just scratch paper for this, but I recommend you get yourself some official player character sheets. Uh, unfortunately, they're in the back of the player's handbook. You photocopy them and you're all good. You can also get them for free on the Wizards of the Coast website. And they're used to track everything from their spells to your equipment to your stats, all those good things, modifiers and so on. Uh, in addition, you'll probably want yourself a notepad with a pencil. It's useful to keep track of things. Now, of course, there's other types of character sheet you can buy. Perhaps they're specific to a setting like Midgard. I use these, but they're essentially all the same. You might also want to get yourself some graph paper, overlays, some dry erase markers as well. These are optional, but they are helpful. Uh, and of course, miniatures. You find a nice appropriate miniature for your character, your hero on the tabletop. It'll help in those combat situations or a show and marching order, for instance. Uh, not essential, but it is definitely adds to the flavor of your gaming session. If you plan on running games or being the storyteller or dungeon master, as it's called in the Dungeons & Dragons system, you're probably going to want some other books besides the player's handbook. First up would be the Dungeon Master Guide, followed by the Monster Manual. Let's take a look at the Dungeon Master Guide. Now, again, this is over 300 pages, and it's full of rules on how to create your setting or how to run games within pre-made settings. Uh, it includes all the rules for magic items, uh, special ways to handle combat, such 
such as flanking, new optional rules. It also includes the foundations of any setting, like religion and cultures, law, all that stuff. How to set it up, put it together, and make sure it runs fluidly in your games. It also has plenty of advice for storytelling, uh, such as how to foreshadow and, and set up challenging encounters, and so on and so forth. So the Dungeon Master Guide is your next purchase if you're going to be the Dungeon Master. Next up is the Monster Manual. This, again, is also very essential if you're going to be the Dungeon Master or Storyteller of your Dungeons & Dragons games. And basically, in a nutshell, this is dozens upon dozens of various monsters to throw at your players uh, to give them a challenge. It includes all their stats, brief descriptions, a stat block, as it's known, so you can run the monsters easily in a game session as well as definitions to help you describe how to use the monsters. So this would be the next book you want to get your hands on. Next up, although not essential to the core rules, we have the DM screen. This is a double-sided screen, four panels. One side is artwork, colorful enough to inspire your players and get them in the mood. The other side, the side of the Dungeon Master, has all the useful charts and tables you'll need to run a smooth game session. Uh, again, this is something not essential, but it's highly recommended. Get yourself a DM screen. And that, folks, is the core books and screen you should have if you're just getting into Dungeons and Dragons. Now with the core rule books in hand and possibly a DM screen, there's some other things, optional things that I'm going to recommend here, and they'll probably be very useful to you in running games if you're a dungeon master. And first up is go out and get yourself a binder, uh, as well as some dry erase pens, multicolors if possible, you'll need them. Uh, but your binder is going to be important. You're going to put all your adventure material, your campaign notes in there. Unless you're using a computer program, this is a good way to go. In this case, Here's an overlay, which you can insert your maps, and you can use dry erase pens to mark locations of characters. Highly useful. This method here is from Pathfinder for keeping track of initiative in combats, which will be important. Uh, as you learn how to play the game, initiative is critical. Who goes first? Who goes last? And this is a magnetic one you can get from Paizo, the makers of Pathfinder. You just write the names and the tabs and move them around on the, the magnetic sheet. That's how I keep track of initiative in my games. Uh, and finally, you'll need a time record sheet. This is a one I made myself. It works fantastic. I'm going to do a separate video on this, showing it off and how it works, but it keeps track of time. But essentially, this is what your binder does does, it collects all this useful information for you. And lastly, I highly recommend you go on the Wizards of the Coast website uh, and get yourself the latest errata or FAQ for the Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition system. Always useful, especially if you play on a regular basis. Uh, you could solve a lot of questionable things in your games with these errata sheets. So download them and throw them in your binder as well. So there you go, folks. That's pretty much everything you need to get started playing D&D. &D. All the core books and materials you'll need as a player and or a dungeon master. Now, that said, there are plenty of other books down the line you might want to consider that both Wizards of the Coast and uh, third-party publishers also produce, like Kobold Press, for instance, and their Midgard campaign. There's a lot of extra books there. But steer, steer away from that for now. Focus on just the core materials you need to get into the game. Go from there. That's my advice. So I hope you enjoyed the video, folks. Like, share, subscribe, all that goodness. Leave me some comments and feedback. Let me know what you think. Did I miss something? Well, let me know. Until next time, folks, hang in there. It's only going to get better. Take care.